Hello there, member currency traders. This is Rob Reinhold. I am joined by Mr. Arcus Sharma, and here we are into the, th the fourth week of March. What we're going to go through in this session, we're going to talk about what happened this week, some of the news. We had Bitcoin hitting a new all-time high. Then we're going to take a look at all the charts. And we always like to look at the charts with a fresh set of eyes. I always use the example of imagine you woke up from a coma. You don't even know who's the president. You don't know where anything is. And someone shows you a chart. That's how you want to look at charts with no bias already built in. And then once we do that, we will rank everything from plus three to minus three. And we will pair the strongest with the weakest. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional Forex and crypto traders. Maverick Currencies is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80 percent of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional Forex and currency trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's get ready for next week. Before we jump into the currency room, I am very happy to announce we are now going to be holding our ninth annual Maverick Trading March Madness Championship Tournament. Now, we do two things every year as a firm. Uh, the first one we do is fantasy football, and we had a great time with fantasy football. It's always a fun time. Um, we always have cash prizes for the winners. This is the other one we do every year, March Madness. Now, look, if you don't care, then just say fine. They'll have some fun without me. If you do care, we're going to be sending out instructions to everybody. We are going to be using the ESPN app like we've done in the past. So you will have to at least get a ESPN username and password to play in the tournament. And it's really cool because we've got first place prize, second place prize, third place prize. It's always fun to just uh, do this kind of stuff with your trading friends. So we'll send that out over the weekend. What we saw last week is we saw the, the markets getting tired. And we've talked about how these markets have started to just get a little bit more tired. They're not bearish, but they're just tired. We saw more of that this week. Now, there is going to be two things we take a look at. One is consolidation. Is it consolidating in order to run higher? That's a base. Or is it showing exhaustion? I'm going to be talking about how you tell the difference between the two of those. The one thing we saw that makes it to where we think it's more of a sign of a top, the 10 year treasury yields rose to very significant levels on higher than expected inflation data. Now look, we did see uh, Bitcoin hit over 73,000 and then everything pulled back. Cryptos are still in a nice bull market run, but they're going to have a hard time going higher if the rest of risk assets go lower. And let's take a look at some of the economic data that we got last month. We had some stronger than expected news out of the UK. So we got uh, better job growth. But when we got GDP, you can see that it came in as expected. So again, I'm going to say that neutral to slightly bullish here on what happened in the UK. But take a look at the US. The US was the big news this week. Hotter than expected CPI. Now, again, it was a it was a slightly hotter read and then the market really took it pretty well. They said, OK, it's a little hotter than expected. Then we got the PPI, which was way more than a little hotter than expected. It was red hot. The market did OK. The markets held in. Yes, we saw a dollar go up a little bit. Yes, we saw yields go up, but there was no panic. There was no panic because we these numbers six months ago, eight months ago, would have caused a panic. They're just not causing a panic at the moment. So let's go in and see what actually happened this week in the markets when everything was said and done. As you can see, we have the S&P flat, flat for the week. We have world index down a little bit. So we definitely had more of a risk off move. Cryptos actually gave up a little bit by the end of it. And then we've got gold that's been red hot. When that dollar went up, that really hurt gold and oil breaking out of the 80 barrier for the first time in a while. I'm actually really quite bullish on energy stocks at the moment. I think that's a, one of the last places to be bullish here in this market. If we take a look at the S&P, 
After breaking out, we really haven't been able to go anywhere, and we're now trading down near our 20 period moving average. So this is getting really close to where we have to get our first bit of concern about this market. We use these moving averages as, hey, this is the green light to be really risk on. The first signal is, uh-oh, we cross below the 20 day moving average. And the second one is, uh-oh, we cross below the 50. Those are the warning signs. And you can see we're getting close. We don't have a warning sign yet, but we are definitely getting close. If we take a look at what happened in the currency market, the thing that jumps out at you is really weak Kiwi. The Kiwi continued its slide from the RBNZ coming out two weeks ago and saying they're going to be more dovish. And you can see this block of trades in here. This is really where the action was. Look at the numbers though. These numbers are not big numbers. In my Wednesday end of day video I did, I came out and I said I was really excited for this week and this week's been a dud. And I am less excited about it for the rest of the week. And sure enough, I did one more trade for the end of the week, a Euro Swiss franc trade that I lost four pips on when everything was said and done. It was a really, really boring, quiet week. And when I say boring and quiet, what I'm really saying is difficult week to make any sort of trade on a trend trading um, strategy. We take a look at the cryptos. Cryptos were down across the board. Even though we hit that all time high, they all pulled back. Highly expected. The question is where are they going to bottom out and are they a buy if and when they bottom out? That's what we're going to be taking a look at in this session. We are still at a plus three. As I said, there are some reasons to be worried. If I could give a 2.5, I could here, but we have to stick with the technicals. Until that 20 day moving average is broken, we must stay at a plus three. Let's take a look at the bond market. This is the thing that's changed. I want you just to take a look and see, okay, this is where we were back when, uh, again, last time markets were at 4.3%. That was back in February. Let's just go back and see where the markets were in February when the yields were around that area. You can see significantly lower. If we could see a pullback here, especially if it pierced above this 4.35, a pierce above the 4.35, um, I think the equity markets tremble and fall. Anka, what do you think about that call? Yeah, absolutely. I think there is some sort of mismatch of price action here. And we have seen sort of a mismatch for the last month or so. So as they have deviated from each other, I think there is a better chance for them to kind of come closer especially as we get all this data that is now supporting uh, going to next week with the FOMC. Again, they can't just talk dovish when the numbers are not dovish. So I think there is a chance where, you know, the, the yield stays strong and the market just come back towards it. So I think we are seeing a formation of that price action. And I think next, next week could be uh, a week where we see that happen. Thanks, I'll get totally agree here. Here's the pullback in crypto, and this is the crypto basket, and you can see that there is some support down here. This is a very critical level. Yes, we had a couple of piercing here, but it just seems that pullbacks are being bought. And as long as pullbacks are being bought, I think you can still look to be on the bullish side. Here is Friday's candle, and you can see the pullback was bought. We want to keep seeing these long lower shadows on these pullbacks that lets us know the buyers are still there. What we don't want to see is big fat red candles that are closing on their lows. Those are going to be very negative for the crypto market going forward. Next week, we've got a few big things here. And let me just point out the biggest thing we have. I mean, actually, I can't even say that is the biggest. I was going to say the US is the biggest, but I'm going to actually disagree with myself that the Japanese yen is the biggest. Anka, what do you think is more important for the markets? Well, you know what? I think for the general overall markets, in like the stock exchanges, the bond exchanges, I do think that the um, U.S. report is more important. But I think this Japanese yen could be the trade of the week. What do you think? 
Absolutely. I think, again, this we have seen the same story play out over and over. And until we really get that day where Bank of Japan make a change, and again, last week we discussed about it, and there's definitely since then more reports that, hey, there will be a change. So I think regardless of what they do, if they do make a change, we expect yen to just rock it off. But then again, if they don't make a change, I think the yen has gone up in anticipation of it. So that means that it can really unwind that trade as well. So I think yen will be a mover regardless because, again, all this hype that got built in the last few weeks, and if that goes away, it's just going to fall apart. So I think, I think it's good both ways. I totally agree that the yen is going to be the largest mover this week, but I think you just flip a coin if you want to try to guess if it's a long or short. I don't think you can figure it out until we hear from the Bank of Japan. We also hear from the RBA. We hear from the RBA. They're expected to leave rates as they are. We'll see if they follow the RBNZ and sound a little bit more dovish than the market expects. CPI coming out of Canada. This will give us some update on what the Bank of Canada is looking at. And then on, on Wednesday, we've got the FOMC. Look, the market is still expecting rate cuts. They still are. The numbers we got from inflation, they are not supporting rate cuts here. We made a prediction at the first of the year when the market was anticipating three rate cuts. We said, we don't think there's any rate cuts this year. I think the markets are going to have to deal with the fact that the Fed is not going to cut rates this year, which should send yields higher and stock markets lower. And then as you can see, big news for um, Kiwi and Aussie later in the week as well really a very packed schedule when you take a look at this and then going on to thursday i mean take a look at this we got snb we also have bank of england so the first half of the week looked dynamite and look at this the second half of the week looks dynamite as well this should be a good trading week it really should be for forex we have huge announcements coming out tons of central banks um, as far as economic reports go, I think you can ignore those. The central bank announcements are going to be the things that move. Let's take a look at our currencies one by one. I'll go through crypto. Anka will take you through Forex. Would having more trading capital help you meet your trading goals? Maverick Currencies is the oldest U.S.-based Forex and crypto prop firm. We fund traders just like you with five and six figure accounts where you keep 70 to 80% of profits. Click the apply link on the top right of this video to start the process. This will take you to a four minute video that explains the trader position and you can read a list of FAQs that answer pretty much all the basic questions you have. After that, if you're interested, fill out an application and then you'll watch the full length recruiting video and schedule an interview with our recruiters. Are you our next trader? Now, crypto we've seen had had a big run. And we talked about if you were going to be long, then you needed to be um, very short term. And sure enough, you can see we got some pullbacks. We're getting pullbacks. The question is, are the pullbacks getting bought? You can see on this candle, we had a deep pullback. It was bought and we closed significantly off the low on Friday. I want to continue to see this to let me know that, hey, crypto is still a buy. Bitcoin Cash to me is not looking like a buy. It is just, again, it's a, it's a tough trade. Bitcoin Cash goes nowhere, takes a huge run, goes nowhere, takes a huge fall. Again, it's, it's a frustrating trade. I'm not going to mess with it. Ethereum was my preferred trade, and this thing is pulled back even deeper than Bitcoin. That tells me that it is no longer going to be my preferred trade because it's been relatively weaker than Bitcoin. So I'm going back to looking for opportunities to buy Bitcoin. But remember, if the equity market breaks and falls, this is not good for risk assets. A lot of people say, oh, Bitcoin's going to keep going up anyway. It's its own market. No, it's not. There are correlations here that will absolutely pull the rest of the cryptos down. We take a look at all of the charts. My favorite chart is actually Litecoin. Why? It's, it made a new high this week. It made a new high. The fact that it made a new high tells me 
it's the one that's outperforming. It's had a nice little buy off the bottom here. If I'm looking at anything, it's like either Bitcoin or Litecoin. These are where my favorites are in this market. All right, Uncle, let's take us through crypto or, or through Forex here. Absolutely. Let's just start with the good old mighty US dollar. <clears throat> looking at the US dollar again, we had quite a change. You know, last week we we did show some a lot of weakness and we were talking about is this where dollar is gonna fall apart? And guess what? It did not. And again, this is supported by the bond yield. So again, it's important to pick, take a look at bond yields because those correlations are working out. So based on where we are right now, we are now breaking above the 20 to 50. So we are have a bump in the trend score going up to plus two. And look at that velocity score. It just stays up and it stays at the same level. So again, I like to buy the bases off of it. So I bullishness in the USD here. On the other side, the yen, which had a nice little rally, has now started to fiddle over here a little bit. So the question is, where is it going to go? I think this is just a pure news play. You know, there's, you know, you can just throw so much technicals at it. This is going to be driven by news. And if the Bank of Japan make a change, this can easily be a bull flag pattern and it just breaks out higher. And if it doesn't do anything, which has happened in the last lot of meetings where this has come out and, you know, no change. I guess what? The yen is going to fall apart. So I think this is why I think the yen is a good play here because it has come off from the February yen to now the mid-March has come off quite a bit. So there's, there's room for yen to run and fall at the same time. So right now, uh, the velocity looks weak. And we've seen that negative correlation too where the dollar is strong, the yen is weak. So that correlation is still working out. Don't love the yen here. Uh, watch out for the volatility next week. That's uh, a pure news play. Now, looking at the European currencies. So we are getting some bounces here and there. But remember, we talked about, you know, keep an eye on the trend score. Nothing has changed for the Swiss franc. I had a lot of questions about, okay, we got a little bounce today. But again, those bounces are just shorting opportunities. It's below the 20, below the 50. Velocity is higher for today. But again, those are the days that tells you don't be in a trade. Because if the trend score is down and the velocity is up, it's a mismatch but I still like Swiss franc to the downside. And it's more reason to like the Swiss franc because take a look at Euro. Euro is strong. So we are seeing strength in Euro. If I have to buy a European currency, it has to be Euro. You can see that along with the USD, this looks very similar. Now we have seen this time to time where Euro and dollar is kind of doing the same thing. And that's what we're seeing your brown. So I like this more on the upside, velocity and the trend score is matching up. This is what you want to buy if you're looking for European, some of the long uh, European currencies. And same thing, the British pound, I was kind of a little disappointed because it did break out and wanted to run, but guess what? It broke out, we are in another consolidation, but realize that the prior resistance is still the support. So I can't really say, hey, this is, this is showing relative weakness. This is just consolidation pattern. So, you know, I like to buy it as it breaks above that resistance level on the daily. So far, velocity is kind of matching up there, but realize that, you know, between the euro and the pound, I think I like euro more than the pound. So that's really where we are with some of the European currencies. Now, let's take a look at some of the growth currencies. I know Canadian dollar is the one that I've been kind of uh, sort of weak on uh, as my outlook, but it's kind of changing in the short term. And again, we talk about those positive correlations and, you know, the USD and the CAD are sort of correlated. It's catching, catching a little bit, bit here. And also, as Rob mentioned, the energy markets like looking a little bit stronger here. So if that correlation kind of comes in play, I don't mind taking a look at CAD on the, on the upside. It just needs to get above that 20 to 50 moving average. And if it does, I think there's more room to run. So at this point, I don't like the CAD short, but I'm more interested in the CAD long if you can clear up the overhead resistance. And I think we'll have, an, we'll have a clear uh, answer uh, on Tuesday when we get the CPI numbers because just like how the U.S. Uh, having a little bit more stronger CPI, if the CAD have a stronger CPI, I think that's just going to propel the Canadian dollar higher as well. Now let's talk about the weaker ones, Aussie and Kiwi. As you can see that Aussie did well on the back of Kiwi weakness and also that the market has been so strong. But I realized that these are the currencies that will fall the most when the equity market fall. And I think that's really where we are. I don't love the Aussie long, but I don't really don't love the Aussie short either because again, the trend score is not supporting it. But if I go on a Kiwi chart, 
and that starts telling you, hey, this is what you want to be short. So I don't like Kiwi or Aussie long. I like them on the short side. Aussie's not ready yet, but I think Kiwi is ready. It's broken out. You can see the velocity is still holding lower. So this is a, this is exactly what I was waiting for. And it, oh, it took almost two weeks for this uh, pattern to develop. And I think at this point, we want to be short on the Kiwi. And especially if the market uh, struggle next week as well, this is only going to help the Kiwi to fall further. That's where we are at. And taking a look at how everything stacks up, I really do still like Swiss franc short and Kiwi short. I, I think those are the two easy places to see where something is trending. It is a little bit more messy on the upside. We do have all the cryptos, the pound. They're in pullbacks right now. I think, I think the only easy trade, and again, I'm saying easy trade because it's the one that makes the most sense. It doesn't mean it's going to be a profitable trade, but I think the 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 most reasonable trade here is long euro short swiss franc and short kiwi and i would actually put kiwi on the number one list for shorting but let's take a look at this is again longer term trends of things that are really breaking when we take a look at shorter term when we take a look at something like euro swiss franc we can see euro and swiss franc are strong together so those are no longer a great pair to trade at least earlier in the week and this really leaves us with euro and kiwi so let's take this and let's go out and take a look at some potential trades i'm going to take a look at a potential trade on litecoin and then a potential trade on euro kiwi starting off with euro kiwi here let's take a look at a daily chart and we just want to see where this is in the wave patterns. You know, we know the thing is moving waves and they move in trends. So we had a strong trend here. It fell. Another strong trend. It fell. And then here, no real clear trend. We fell here, gathered up again. So we've seen that we're basically have been trading between this range of 174 and 179. This is the range we've been trading for in this daily chart. The question is, is it going to break out and run above that? At this point, it's got a bunch of momentum. The question is, can we clear it? I'm going to wait until 179.50. It might be a little late, but guess what? I'd love to just, if it doesn't do it, not get filled, not even have to deal with the trade. But 179.50, there's a lot of room for this to move after it breaks through that. No major resistance until 182. Maybe some minor resistance here in the 180 area. I think this thing's got a lot of run if it does break out. But I want to be a little patient on this one, making sure that it is going to be stabilized. So that is my Euro Kiwi trade. And let's take a look at a Litecoin trade. I like this one because it was the only crypto. Well, I shouldn't say only crypto. Bitcoin, Bitcoin made a new high, but it just crawled up there. You can see Litecoin broke out of support. And then backed off. Really, if this candle here holds, so let's say this candle holds, and we can get a green candle here next week. I, I think this is a buy. I think this is a buy. Maybe 97.50, 98, somewhere in here. And then you've got all the way up to 105 before resistance. I think that's a trade that makes some sense here on Litecoin if you would prefer playing the cryptos rather than Forex. Okay, what do you want to take a look at? Hey, Rob, I have like three players I'm taking a look at. So first one, Kiwi CAD. Again, this is a premise for Canadian CPI that's due on Tuesday. As you can see that this thing has now broken below the support that we were in for a little while there. So as we have broken that support, and again, I'm looking at relative strength weakness, and if the CAD does strengthen further, this can easily fall down towards that 8178 area. So again, leaving us with a nice little range to kind of go before it can touch that support. So again, this is going to be in anticipation that the, you know, the cab will strengthen with the CPI that is due on Tuesday. Now, Kiwi against the dollar. This is another trade that hasn't really hit the bottom yet, but you can see that if I'm looking for a breakout next week, Dollar, Kiwi dollar, it fits that picture right there. Again, remember the FOMC on Wednesday. This is the FOMC trade. That break of that support, 60-60 area. And if it does break below, you can see that this has a lot more room 
to fall further. Risk to reward looks great. I just need to get the timing right. So that's one I'm looking at. And the last one is the dollar says franc. And again, this is both the FOMC play on Wednesday. And you can see that this thing has also been consolidating support around the 87 area. Uh, the resistance is about the 89, I would say, the parabolics are there. Again, I love these consolidations that, you know, lead to some big breakouts. So again, we just a matter of getting that big catalyst next week, which is the FOMC. But I think the risk to reward really make more sense for dollar strong and um, pair that against these uh, dollars as franc and the Kiwi dollar here. So that's all I got for now, Rob. Thanks, Anka. Those are all just fantastic setups. But boy, this week is going to be different than this week we just had. This week we just had was a little disappointed. I got to say, I was ready to go saying, hey, this is going to be a good week. It fizzled out. And by Wednesday, I'm like, hey, let me just let me just chill out until next week where I think the traders are going to be better. We've got uh, Bank of Japan and FOMC all in the same week. Plus, I mean, plus you got RBA, plus you've got uh, SNB, plus you've got... Uh, the uh, Bank of England. So just should be dynamite. Be on your toes. This is another week. And I said this last week and it did not come true. So I'll say it again. Maybe I'll just say it again until it's right. No, but this week should be a much better week. And that means that you should be looking to be more active, not less active, more active on a week like this. But big moves happen with central bank movements. So let's be disciplined. Let's use, you know, half sizes, quarter sizes, if you're going to take positions before announcements. And let's make sure that we survive this week. All right. Thanks for everybody. Everyone have a great weekend. Goodbye.